Hello everybody, um, it's Interest Worth Predictions here. Uh, today I am going to be talking about a significant sequence of severe weather and a possible tornado outbreak that is ongoing right now and that'll continue through the next few days. And yes, I did say outbreak. I'll explain why I said that in a little bit. Um, if you are around here, please like and uh, subscribe. That would mean a lot to me, but let's get into it. Uh, first, we're just going to get into the radar here. We currently have a pretty strong velocity signature and a tornado warning in northern Louisiana. We also have another severe warning in more south central Louisiana with some rotation on it. Um, we have a severe thunderstorm warning in Illinois, and we also have one in Indiana and Kentucky for Louisville there. Uh, here's the overall map right now. Uh, overall, we have uh, severe thunderstorm watches up in north central Missouri, down through uh, southern Missouri with tornado watches in effect in Louisiana, Arkansas, and Texas. And then we have a tornado warning here, a severe warning there, severe warning there, and a severe warning here. We also do have red flag warnings and other things like that. Um, Here's the Weather Prediction Center. We are expecting uh, severe weather anywhere from Illinois into Louisiana today. Tomorrow, we could see some isolated severe weather from central Michigan into portions of Mississippi and Alabama. Day three, we could see severe weather in Texas, all the way up into Illinois and into Alabama. Um, here's our fronts map. You see here, thunderstorm icon uh, starts to pop up Saturday. Then we get to Saturday morning. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Saturday has a severe weather threat, if I didn't already mention this, kind of in this area, in here, pretty large area. We'll go into it right now, though. Here's what the Storm Prediction Center has. Um, we had unlikely shot of a watch across the, that area, Missouri, portions like that. A watch is possible, 60% chance across Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Louisiana. Um, we do already have a tornado watch that includes a few tornadoes likely, some in, some in 10th possible, widespread wind gusts up to 70, and isolated large hail up to 2 inches, and we have a severe watch for 1.5 inch hail, a couple tornadoes, and 70 mile per hour wind gusts. Here's your current outlook for today. We do have a day one um, enhanced risk across eastern Texas, northern Louisiana, western uh, Mississippi, and a lot of Arkansas. We do have a slight risk from south sent from western extreme western Illinois into southern Louisiana. We have a ten percent risk of tornadoes, non significant, and then a thirty percent risk of non significant wind gusts, along with a fifteen percent risk of hail, non significant again. Tomorrow a large marginal and another secondary one. Primary hazards include a tornado or two, isolated wind gusts up to seventy mile per hour, and isolated large hail up to one point five inches in diameter. Day three, uh, this was actually had an emergency upgrade to enhanced risk, which is rare across this area. I do expect this to be expanded, something like this, and we could even see a moderate in place somewhere. We'll have to see. Uh, there's two in significant risk areas, one for that enhanced and then one for the eastern side of the slide. I do expect that to be bigger. Probs for day one, if it's this goes enhanced, I do expect all significant probs, so 10 sig tornado, 10 sig wind, or 30 sig wind, and 30 sig hail. If this goes moderate, I do expect a 15 sig tour, 45 sig hail maybe, and then a 30 sig wind, or maybe 45, or maybe just 30 sig hail as well. Day four, we have a risk of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center in portions of Alabama, Florida, and Georgia. I do expect the risk tomorrow morning when we wake up. I do expect this to look something like that. And there probably will be an enhanced somewhere in there with significant props as well. Here's the current environment these storms have to work with. A thousand to a two thousand cape is what we're ordering right now. Uh, surface to one shear is anywhere between 30 and 20 knots. We do have effective significant tornado parameter of 1 to 2 across the warm sector, and then bulk shear of like 60, 70 knots. Here's an update on that tornado warning. Looks to be like looks like the rotation has died off. Uh, here's the current photographs from some stations across the warm sector here. Here's the one in Louisiana. Honestly, a pretty good photograph there. Here's the one in Jackson. Not terrible. Here's the one in Memphis. Pretty favorable. Lots of uh, listing in the middle levels and stuff. Here's the one up by St. Louis. Pretty favorable for some tornado potential up there. And then the one in Shreveport. 
Uh, let's first take you off with the H Triple R model. We're gonna be mainly going into kind of the be the kind of what's happening tonight. Um, let's just go into a forecast loop here. We're gonna go first start off in kind of the Ohio Valley region here. Um, so here's our future radar. H Triple R did have a super solid 19Z getting uh, discreet. We've had a few 20 to 20s today and like three 20 days in northern Louisiana. Here's what the future H Triple R suggests. It suggests this line growing upscale with maybe some super solid activity in front. Ooh, with the H Triple R, it is we are expecting the line to weaken in the Midwest of around. 9 p.m. or so. Still going in Dixie. H triple R just doesn't want to load right now. Then looks like a new line of storm starts to form behind the old one. And I wouldn't be surprised to see tomorrow with slide risk, maybe. We'll see what happens with it. I hate that this is not loading very fast at all. Um, yeah, we could see a slight risk across portions of um, Alabama tomorrow with this uh, supercell complex there that just moves off. I do think there could be a slight risk. Uh, we'll take a sounding, why not? Yeah, decent cheer, decent stability. That's favorable. Then it looks like we get our severe storms to move off further to the east. Then here's Friday, the big day. We get some storms to form in Alabama early in the day. But now we're going to be losing a step of resolution here. As we're going to be going to the NAM nest model. And we're really not going to be looking. I don't really want to do the loop anymore because, yeah. This is around 21Z. At this point, we're starting to see some supercells start to fire in western Texas. Some super cells start to fire in this area. And you can know the name nest model. This is probably going to be more linear um, than what you would typically expect. But that is typical with the name nest. It typically over does the linear aspect of thunderstorms. Uh, so this is around 21Z. Take a sounding out in west central Texas here along the dry line. And you can see here, this is actually past the dry line. So these are going to be elevated hailers. In Mississippi and Louisiana, in that enhanced risk, it's a bit of a different story. We have high cape of 4,000 with high with some shear and shear um, increasing with height. Um, so that's pretty significant right there. Um, at 22Z, we start to see those thunderstorms really pop off. Um, we start to see, if we take some soundings in central Mississippi, we start to see pretty similar environment with a little bit less instability. Uh, if you do look at the surface to 3 kilometer helicity at this point, very high, especially across Texas, Arkansas, where you're going to get those thunderstorms later on at night, which I'll talk about in a little bit here. Instability, it's there. That is a dry line literally just bulging its way. Um, if we do end up looking at the crossovers, which I don't really look at these much, and I should probably give these some more love. We have a very favorable environment, even right here. I'm just going to take a sounding right in the middle of that good crossover there. Look at that, 5,000 cape. That's a lot of instability for these storms to work with, with decent shear too. But these crossovers throughout the warm sector are just off the charts really good. Anywhere from Illinois in here, anywhere in here, we have amazing crossovers. These are going to help permit a pretty significant tornado threat, I feel like, for this day. Um... I do see potential for potentially several tornadoes in the few of which could be strong. I'm waiting for that wrap model to load in. It's actually loading right now. Um, but yeah, it's looking very significant. Um, I don't try to sound like I'm doom casting like some other people do sometimes. I'm really not. It just looks bad. Uh, but there is expected to be a low pressure that develops, and there you go. This is expected to transport further north and evolve with a triple point across this area and areas further to the north later on in the day. Anything to the west of that low is going to be um, in the drier air. It's going to be more elevated off the ground is what we call it usually. So we're not going to have to worry about those storms. Southern Missouri is likely along the warm front. Yeah, that's along the warm front. 
Uh, not much instability or shear, but it's got enough. Watching in front of those bubbling cumulus in northeastern Louisiana, and yeah, there you go, 4,000 Cape. Lots of instability to work with. Around 0 Z, we start to see some convective initiation in Oklahoma. This is when those storms start to pop off there. This looks like that's behind the dry line, too. Oh my, this is in central um, Mississippi. There's probably going to be some widespread supercells from, for a large area from potentially Mississippi, Alabama, through Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana. Around 1Z, we start to get that convective initiation in Arkansas and Oklahoma, making soundings out in front of it. Very favorable, except it's a bit capped and a little bit elevated there. Um... Central Mississippi, looking back over there, it's still very favorable. South Central Arkansas, it's a bit more favorable down here. We have less of a cap, and that's a loaded gun sound. This is what we call loaded gun. Very high lapse rates down here in my in the top left corner. We have high cape, high shear. Everything's there. We just need to wait for that cap to go off, and it likely will in a 2Z. Boom, we start to see some more widespread thunderstorm activity. 3Z, we start to get more thunderstorms forming more in a linear fashion. Don't really trust that. I do think this is going to be more of a supercellular event. Uh, but the NAM nest is spitting out a huge linear segment. Rather, if you go to the NAM model, it's showing more discrete action. We get one supercell here, one there. One, you see, we're getting more discrete action on the NAM, and we're going to be able to take this out for a little bit here. The NAM shows a supercell riding that triple point there. Here's a sounding you get on the triple point. Very favorable for tornadoes and wind gusts and large hail. More of, more of a lesser large hail threat, but very, very strong sounding there. You have multiple other supercell structured thunderstorms there to the east. Favorable environments are out in front. Another one down in Louisiana there. Yet again, a favorable environment in front. If I do end up taking a mean average sounding for this area, it ends up being a very favorable sounding with high shear, decent lapse rates, decent decay for damaging wind gusts, surface-based thunderstorms, high instability. You get what I mean. 9Z, these thunderstorms are staying pretty discreet in nature still. Um, we do end up taking a sounding there, central Mississippi, kind of in between those thunderstorms there. We see very favorable sounding for tornadoes yet again. Probably some strong tornadoes out of that sounding due to the fact it's got that high instability shear combo there. Right with that and that super soul's updraft, and actually I should not take it there. That's contaminated. Further south along the line here, yet again, less of a favorable sounding. The kinematics aren't there, which is your wind shear. If you don't take these soundings in like northern Kentucky here, this is along the triple point. That's where the warm front, cold front, and or dry line meet with the low pressure. And very favorable environment for some supercells over there as well. Um, we're going to move it to the east more. And actually, we're going to move this over to the east more. This is when we're going to start to see a Dixie Alley risk evolve. We start to see this is probably when the squall line grows upscale in between in the AM hours of uh, for, uh, Saturday, very favorable sounding for embedded supercells within that linear segment. 2,000 Cape, 600 Holicity, very high numbers. 15Z, we see that line consolidate, become more widespread, very high shear still. I'll take an average sounding across this area. There you go. It's pretty decent. If I do end up taking it a bit further to the east, maybe, it'll be a bit better. Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. Duh, less capping and more instability. I do end up seeing here 18Z. We start to see, we get more we get more time for this instability to kind of heat up in Alabama. Florida, boom. Very favorable sounding again. That's a box sounding, mean sounding of the area. See here, 21Z. Uh, if we still look at the instability here, you're going to get the highest instability closest to the ocean shore. So that's going to be areas anywhere in here, you're going to have the highest instability. And areas further to the west too. Um, and this is, this is a dry line setup. This is rare to get a dry line out here. Rare. 
it's rare to get a dry line out here with this magnitude, so you're probably going to have a couple of lines of thunderstorms, one along that cold front maybe, and then one along that dry line as well. But as you see here, this is going to move eastbound. Looks like a secondary area of thunderstorms ends up forming right here in Mississippi with that, that leftover instability. As you see here, it's not very highly sheared, but there's a lot of instability, so there'll be some thunderstorm updrafts that go up. A little panhandle, boom. High shear, some cap at this point, and a little bit more elevation with the soundings. You get the point. You start to see as the night evolves, the line still moves on, and I do we do see it still have its strength. And now the wrap is fully loaded. Let's take a look at what it shows. It, it, the wrap is a very low res model when it comes to reflectivity, so let's just take some soundings across the board here. We'll take one there. We'll take one here. We'll take one here. Here, we'll take one there. Okay, that first. Oh my, that second one is a monster cap, but it's very favorable. Loaded gun again. Okay, that one has too big of a cap, as well as this one. Um, what about earlier, like 21? The wrap typically overconvex everything, which means it typically shows more precipitation than what actually happens. Um,. Uh, that's a very favorable, that's a very favorable, okay, that's actually a very favorable sounding right here. Um, let's see here, what about 23? Let's take a look at central Arkansas, then we'll take a look at northern Louisiana. We'll just take a look at multiple spots here. Okay, that's not a good sounding north with a warm front. Move on. That's a good sounding, holy cow. So yeah, the ramp is indicating pretty strong potential as well with this risk. I do want to take a look at the GEFS ensembles like we usually do every single time. Uh, we end up uh, doing these videos here. Um, let's take a look at what the mean super circle composite is. So here's Thursday. Friday, we have an area in here. And then it ends up getting expanded. So, and then there's Saturday. Oh my, that's actually the mean. Holy crap. Let me just check what the max is. Did it glitch? Um, no, not for like Friday. Oh, that glitched 100%. Okay. Still showing a favorable environment further out, and then, yeah. We'll take a look at what the uh, Euro is showing for this upcoming system here. We'll just take a look at the instantaneous flash rate like we normally do. Um... Here's that future radar for tomorrow, Friday morning, Friday afternoon. Look at all these areas of supercells and different mesoscale complexes. There's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, another front, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You get the deal. Looks like there's going to be a very active pattern. Let's just look at the cape here. Um, whoops, uh, let's take a look at starting from Friday. So this is Friday. We're not going to have any problems with instability. You're going to have 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 cape. Same with Saturday, you're going to have 1,000 to 2,000. You're going to have a little bit less, though. That golf really warms up. Then we start to see another event out here, potentially major, if we can get models to agree. And then, boom, there's your run. Um, that is going to do it for uh, this one, everybody. Um, if you liked it, this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.